Hi, and welcome to the Nebula Block of the Month. I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts, and I'll be here once a month to give an overview for each month. We're now in month 10, which means we have now completed all 18 of our blocks, and we're ready to move on to our background. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do before we get started on cutting is we have two big decisions to make. We need to decide what size quilt we are making, and we need to decide what fabric we are using for our background. For the original cover sample of Nebula, I used this selection of fabrics from Tula Pink's True Colors. For an additional sample, I used these fabrics from Tula Pink's line work as well as a mix in of a couple True Colors. And I made a version that has the zebras as the third fabric and one that has this hexagon as the third fabric. So once you decide which fabric you're using, then you also need to decide which size quilt you're making. The original cover sample is a queen size that finishes at 96 by 97. Also included are directions to finish your quilt as a king size at 111 by 108. It adds additional fabric in all directions. And then the third option is to finish your quilt as a lap. The lap is 78 by 90 and finishes as a hexagon shape. So once you have those two decisions made, let's get started on cutting. The next step is to begin cutting shapes for our background. The finishing directions booklet has the cutting information for each size. The lap cutting directions are on page four, queen cutting directions begin on page eight, and king cutting directions begin on page 18. I find that it's helpful to mark the page for the quilt size that you are making with a clip so that you don't accidentally turn to the wrong cutting directions while working on your quilt. Different fabrics will need different shapes. The shapes used for the background are diamonds, triangles, and half triangles, both right and left. You should be familiar with all of these by now, but I'll quickly give an overview. I'm going to use this fabric for our demonstration since the ruler will show up best on it. Note that you will not necessarily be cutting all of the shapes from this fabric. The first thing that we need to do is square up the edge of our strip. So I'm going to take my sidekick ruler and I'm going to line up my three and a half inch solid line and the base of my ruler at the top of my strip. And I'm going to cut. I'm going to rotate that strip around. And please note that I am right handed, so I'm just going to start by showing you right handed directions and then I'll go over tips for left handed. And the first shape I want to show you how to cut is our right half triangle. So to cut right half triangles, we're going to start with our ruler right side up. We're going to line up our solid half triangle line, our three and a half inch line, and the base of our ruler, and cut. And now we can go ahead and cut more of these if that's what we need by rotating the ruler around and cut, or we can move on to cutting other shapes. So I'm going to show you how we cut a diamond. So to cut a diamond, we're going to slide our ruler so that we have our three and a half inch solid line, our three and a half inch solid line, and the base of our ruler, and cut. And we can continue to work our way down the strip, cutting as many diamonds as we need. Or we can move on to another shape if there's another shape that we need. So I'm gonna show you how we cut our triangle. So to cut our triangle, we're gonna flip our ruler towards ourselves, and we're gonna line up our three and a half inch line and our solid line here and cut. Make a little more space for myself here. So there's our triangle. Now if we need another triangle, I can flip my ruler towards myself, line up right here, cut my next triangle. Or say I need a left half triangle. To cut a left half triangle, I'm going to turn my fabric over to the wrong side. All right-handed triangles are with the fabric right side up. All left triangles are with the fabric wrong side up. Okay, so this is the back of my fabric. I'm gonna rotate my ruler around. And I've got my solid line here, my three and a half inch line here, base of my ruler, and cut. And to continue cutting this shape, I'm just going to rotate my ruler around. And this now looks like when we cut this, but it'll be the reverse because it's the wrong side of our fabric. So we have our solid line here, solid line here, and cut. I can continue until I get as many of each shape that I need 
for the quilt that I'm making. If you are left-handed, go ahead, square up your fabric, and then take your ruler and to cut a right half triangle, you're gonna line up your three and a half inch line, your solid line, and you're gonna go ahead and cut. And then you'll have an angled edge, which will look like this. And then you can move on to your next shape, which would be a diamond or a triangle and cut the shapes that you need down the length of the strip. So whether you're right-handed or left-handed, go ahead and follow the finishing directions and cut all the shapes you need for your background. When you cut diamonds with the sidekick ruler, they end up having two sharp points and it's easier to put together the quilt if you go ahead and trim off those sharp points. So I'm gonna quickly show you how we do that. I'm gonna take the sidekick ruler on top of our already cut diamond, line up this solid black line, and this edge of our ruler, trim, rotate around, and trim. We also can do this with any of the other rulers, including the mini hexamore. Someone in the Facebook group came up with this, so thank you for the suggestion. Go ahead and slide the ruler so the two edges line up with the diamond, trim, and trim. And the same technique can be used to cut off the sharp points of triangles and half triangles, any of the shapes that you use with my ruler. So I will explain in just a moment why that is helpful, and then you can decide if you're gonna go ahead and do that to your diamonds. The background of Nebula has a lot of pieces, and keeping them organized is very helpful when we begin to put our units and our blocks together. I like to use these 12 by 12 plastic storage bins that are designed for scrapbooking papers. They're available at many craft stores. And I'll put my stacks of cut diamonds and other shapes in here. And when I have only a few in a given fabric, I don't wanna lose track of them in here. I will put them together with a wonder clip. That way I can keep things nice and organized so that when I go to assemble my units, I'm ready to go. Now that we have cut all of our shapes, our next step is to begin to sew them into units, and then we're going to sew those units into blocks. The first unit that we are going to use quite frequently in the queen and king layouts is this pieced diamond. And this pieced diamond is easier to put together if you have taken the time to notch the points off of your diamonds. It's not necessary, but it is very helpful. So I'm going to show you how we sew them together with and without the notched points. So the next step is we're gonna head on over to our machine and we're gonna sew these into pairs. First, I'm going to show you how we sew these pairs together when we have notched our points off of our diamonds. So we're gonna put those right sides together. It's gonna to perfectly line up there and there. I've got my machine set for my scant quarter inch seam. And I'm using my 2600 gray R fill, which is what I've been using all along. And we're just gonna sew right along here. I'm gonna repeat that process with the next pair. Now, in this example, we don't have our corners notched off. So when we go to put them right sides together, we need to make sure that we are not like this. We need to be offset so that from that valley to this valley is a scant quarter of an inch seam, which once you eyeball it enough is something that you can do. But if you are in any way uncomfortable, I highly suggest taking the time to cut the points off because it is very easy with this method to go a little bit too far down, a little bit too far up, and if this is off, everything in the rest of your background is going to be off as well and compound quickly into some headaches that you don't want to have to, to deal with. So. so that scant quarter inch, and again, these two pieces not notched, I'm gonna lay them together, we need to make sure. And you can take a ruler and measure this. I find that um, notching them off in the first place is really the easiest way to be accurate. I'm 
We now have pressed all of our pairs and we can now sew them together into our diamond units. And again, I will show you how we do that with our notches and without our notches. With our notches, we're gonna flip our pieces right sides together and it's gonna line up with this edge here and this edge here, pin, sew our scant quarter of an inch. Without our notches, we're going to use these triangle dog ears that hang out into the seam allowance. We're gonna overlap them on top of each other and we're gonna create the valley to valley again that we had when sewing the two pieces together. We'll pin and we wanna make sure our scant quarter of an inch goes perfectly from that valley to the next valley. First, I'm gonna show putting our pairs together when we have our notched corners. So we're gonna take this piece, place it on top of this one, right sides together, and we're gonna align down here, and we're gonna align up here, and sew our scant quarter of an inch. And you can pin this piece if you find that helpful. Um, I don't generally pin at this stage. And what you're looking for in the middle here is just a slight overlap and let's go ahead and sew. Make sure I don't flip my seams. This is a good opportunity if you have a stiletto to use that to hold your seams down. And now I'll show you what this looks like if you did not notch your corners. So, in this example, I still have my sharp points and I have these triangle dog ears in the middle. So they're what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna line them up. and They're gonna help me approximate the quarter of an inch from this valley to this valley. When they are lined up is when I am in the right place. Some people might find it helpful to pin here in the middle once you have them lined up and go ahead and sew that seam. The next step is to go ahead and make all of our diamonds, uh, as many as you need for whichever size quilt you're making. I do find that it's helpful to sew at least one or two examples of each of the color layouts so that you make sure that you are matching up the correct fabric with the um, correct fabric. They're labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F, but it can be easy to kind of mix them up and then go ahead and sew all of your pieced diamond units. Now that we have completed sewing our diamonds into units, it's time to sew those units together to create our diamond blocks. So we're gonna lay out four smaller diamonds and the first step is we're going to sew those into rows. And it helps here if you have your notched corners, but if you don't, uh, that's okay as well. Although I do find it easier, so I'm gonna use my notched corner up here. If I didn't have my notched corner, I would have another triangle on this piece and I would line those up and sew from valley to valley. So when I do have my two notched corners, just gonna line up my notch and my notch. And I'm gonna sew both of these with a scant quarter inch seam as we've been using all along. Press those open and I will end up with these pieces. So now I have these two rows and I need to sew my rows together to complete my diamond block. So I'm gonna flip those right sides together. Again, I'm gonna line up my notches. And if you don't have your notches, you'll have your triangles and the seam allowances. So line that up, probably helps to pin due to the length of this piece. We're gonna sew that with our scant quarter inch seam, press that open, and we'll end up with our first diamond block. And this diamond block is used in the queen and king layouts. Follow your pattern for how many you need to make. And then this color arrangement is used in the queen and king as well. And this one is made up of four pieced diamond units. This one had one solid larger diamond. And then this third one is used only in the king. And this one has three piece diamonds as well as one solid diamond there. So go ahead and follow your pattern to make as many diamond blocks as needed for the size quilt you are making. Pieced triangle blocks are used in both the queen and the king layouts. And they are put together using two triangles and one diamond. We're gonna take our triangle, put it on top of our diamond, right sides together. 
and so our scant quarter of an inch seam. And some people find that it's helpful to trim the points off of our triangles, just as we have with our diamonds. And if you choose to do that, this is what it's gonna look like. And when you flip it over, lines up here as well as here. So we're gonna sew that scant quarter of an inch seam, and this is what we're gonna end up with. And then we're gonna repeat to add the second triangle. And again, you can cut the points off of this triangle if you find that it's helpful. If you don't cut the points off, you're gonna be sewing from this valley to this point with your scant quarter of an inch seam. And this is the block that we're gonna end up with. And as I mentioned, these are for queen and king. This specific color arrangement is for the king quilt that I am making right now. If you are making a queen, you will have different fabrics. So keep an eye on your pattern so that you make the correct block for the quilt size you are making. Half triangle units and blocks are going to be used to finish the right and left sides with the queen and king layouts. We're gonna begin making them with two half triangles and one triangle. You're gonna have a right, a left, and a triangle. You're gonna put your half triangles together, scant quarter and seam as we've been doing, press that seam open. Next step is to add the triangle. We're gonna put that right sides together, and this is where it can be helpful to notch our triangle corners as we've been doing with our diamonds and some of our triangles. And that would look like this. And we're gonna sew from there to there with our scant quarter inch and you will have a small piece overhanging of the half triangle that is correct. Open that up, press it open, and this is the piece that we're gonna end up with. And then we're going to work on the bottom half of the block. And the bottom half of the block is gonna look like this. It's gonna start with a large half triangle and two diamonds and we're going to piece the diamonds together same way that we did earlier when making our diamond units and then we're going to add our half triangle unit and this is where it can be helpful to notch this piece um, so we're going to line that up there and you're going to have a little piece overhanging just as we did in the other step and the notch point there you don't have to notch it this is what it'll look like if you decide not to um, but if you're worried about it coming too far, stretching, this is bias, whatnot, it can be helpful to notch the point there. So line that up, scant quarter inch seam, and this is the unit that we end up with. So now where we're at is we have this and we have this. We're gonna go ahead and put them together to create this block. So again, we're gonna flip this over and you may or may not have this notched. If you do, it can help with your alignment. And we're gonna line up the straight edge here and our blunt top of this point should line up here. These are both um, the same height, these pieces. So we're gonna line this up and we're gonna sew across here. And then we're gonna open that up and this is the block that we're gonna end up with. And we're gonna be making this block in many different um, arrangements of fabric. So pay attention to your pattern to make sure that you make it correctly. And we're also going to be making mirror images. So you're going to make this one and then you're going to make this one. And I suggest marking them off in your booklet as you make your right and left half triangle units and blocks to complete the edges of our quilt. The large lap features one type of background block. And this is what that block looks like and it has triangles, diamonds, and a large diamond. And we're gonna put that together by starting with triangle and a diamond, place them right sides together, line them up, scant quarter inch seam, open that up to get this piece here. Then we're going to take some of these and add in a diamond. So we're gonna go ahead and right sides together, scant quarter inch seam, and this is what we're gonna come up with. Then we are going to take this piece and this piece, and we're going to put those together and do, again, our scant quarter inch seam. And this is what we're gonna end up with. So we're gonna make a whole bunch of these, follow your pattern for the exact number that you need. And then you're going to take some of these and you're going to add in a large diamond. We're gonna place these right sides together, scant quarter inch seam, and when we open that up, we're going to have the bottom half of our block. Then to complete our block, 
we're going to add this piece up here. Put these right sides together, scant quarter inch seam, and when we open it up, this is the block that we're gonna end up with. And you might be tempted to add one more triangle up here, but this is what the block looks like, so go ahead and follow your pattern if you are working on the lap size on pages four and five to create the number of background blocks needed. Turns out I had so much great content that we're gonna break it into two videos. So this is month 10, part one, and next week I'll be back with month 10, part two. So go ahead, get your blocks done, and I'll be back here next week to show you how we assemble our blocks together into a finished quilt top.